You know, uh, I started on piano um, at a very young age, and I kind of, uh, I, I dropped it a little bit. Um, you know, they, they really uh, wanted me to start practicing heavily and do like all the, uh, in Canada where I'm from, there's like the Royal Conservatory examinations that they do every year, and I really didn't, I wasn't into that. I didn't want to be tested on, on piano, so I kind of like stopped taking lessons around the age of seven or something like that. And um, then I, I started playing trumpet in um, elementary school, like just in the elementary school concert band. And uh, when, I, when I started high school, uh, my first year I played trumpet in the jazz band and I quickly realized that I was not in any way cut out to be a jazz trumpet player. Uh, just the physicality of the instrument uh, really did not work for me. I sort of went through a year of sweating it and, and was like, you know, I gotta, I gotta play an instrument where like if I hit the key for G, a G comes out every time. So. Uh, I kind of got back into piano and I got with a, a local teacher and learned some harmony, you know, learned some standards, a little bit of stride piano, a little bit of, you know, George Shearing style lock hand and um, piano was uh, my main instrument up until the point where I started this 18-piece uh, big band, Secret Society, at, at which point I, I became a lapsed piano player because um, there weren't enough hours in the day to keep up my piano chops and run a big band full time. Oh wow, uh, I'm not sure that I do. Uh, I mean, I'm sure in Montreal we played for the door someplace and maybe made like, you know, 13 bucks each, something like that. That probably, probably would have been it. Um, but what was nice about, uh, you know, I went, to, I went to school in Montreal for my undergrad at, at McGill University and there were places where uh, student groups could play in town. Uh, at the time, um, you know, like Monday nights, Tuesday nights, and just having the experience of playing music uh, in a quasi-professional setting uh, as opposed to like an academic setting. I think that was really valuable. Um, you know, everyone kind of laments the loss of uh, dues paying on the bandstand and, and real world experience. And I think it does, you know, if there, there's one thing I would change about jazz education, it would be to tr put uh, students in front of real audiences, you know, civilians, not like, you know, their friends from school, but like the people who came out to the bar that night, uh, because that's a whole other thing, is trying to communicate in um, an often indifferent or hostile environment. Uh, and that's, you know, a really important skill to develop as, as a musician, is to make sure the music is coming across and communicating something. I mean, otherwise, you might as well just stay in the practice room if you're not out there to make a difference in the lives of the people in your audience. Hi, I'm Darcy James Argue, and to check out more videos, go to jazztimes.com.